This video is brought to you by PCBWay, your one-stop solution for PCB manufacturing and assembly. Also, this video is for educational purposes only. This is not a tutorial. for meeting with me today. Yeah. It's a pleasure to meet you. Today I wanted to take a closer look at the Tesla coil gun that we all saw in Destin's video and let my uh, curiosity run wild because it's a feat of engineering and let's take a look at it. Okay, well, we'll uh, let's start with the backpack. How about that? Yeah, sure. All right, let's pop the cover here and we'll see, uh, take a look at what's inside. Okay. We've got these two little knurled uh, hand nuts here to uh, hold the cover on. For easy Two removal. on each side, yep. Because, you know, we do have to remove the batteries to charge it. They, they're they uh, individually charged. Okay. Set that down. And speaking of batteries, I guess we'll just start there. Uh, so we've got, um, 16 22 volt uh, nickel metal hydride uh, batteries. No, these are actually lipos. Okay. Um, so they're, um, that's going to give us a voltage of what? Let's see, uh, 22 times 16, 352 volts nominal on the bus. On the bus. And uh, these batteries normally uh, were made for drones or you know, remote controlled cars. And they had a long lead on them, uh, about six inches or so. Okay. We trimmed those off just to save room in the pack and that they, add, you know, every little bit of resistance you can remove helps, right? Mm -hmm. So we also made a, uh, th this is kind of my contribution to the project is okay. uh, this bus uh, of connections. And they're actually uh, solid copper wire inside a piece of vinyl tubing, and that's pumped with uh, silicone. Okay. So that basically makes insulation for the wire for this custom uh, connection here. Because this thing short spin, it goes nuclear. Oh yeah, I can imagine, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the, the, the positive comes out there goes through a fuse block. I've got an extra there just uh, in case. Yeah, for on the go. <laughs> yeah. What's the rating of the fuse? I want to say this is a 60 amp. 60 amp yeah. and a, like a 400 volt fuse or how do you choose that kind of thing? It's 30 amp. 30 amp. Yeah. Okay. ASO 30 amp. So it, it's calculated. I think Philip or Steve one did the calculation and decided the, the value there. Okay. Um, so then that we come out of our fuse there and go into a separate breaker. Uh, and that acts as the power switch, basically. Okay. And if we flip it over here, yeah. you can see this. Um, I can move this in there. Philip machine, these G10. Uh, protectors here that also act as a pin holder so that yeah that pin there keeps the uh, breaker from turning on accidentally okay and that's primarily for like transport you don't want it being bumped and turned on because that would supply the circuit with the battery voltage it would okay. uh, now if the gun wasn't plugged in it, it wouldn't typically do anything but you just for safety reasons don't want it coming on when you're not expecting it to and you said Philip machined the G10. What is that? Is that the material type? Yeah, that's G10 fiberglass. Super tough, strong stuff. The the panel is made of that too. These side plates. Okay. Would I order that from uh, some materials company online? Yeah, it, it's it's a common form of fiberglass. I think uh, my master car may have it. Okay, I've heard of them. Um, yeah, see, so it's it's readily available. It's difficult to machine though. It, you'll have to find. Uh, someone with a proper machine shop, uh, machine shop to, to handle it because it, it doesn't cut very nicely doing it by hand. You really mm -hmm. need to machine it. Okay. So if you need to do something by hand, I, I would uh, use a different material probably. 
And what's the breaker specs? Is it like... I think this was uh, a 30 as well, but we can check in there. 30 amp. And do you think... You, did you just get that at the hardware store? I want to say this came from Mauser or uh, DigiKey. I can't, uh, I can't really make out the rating, but I, yeah, I want to say that matches the fuse. It's 30 amp. Gotcha. So then we come out of there. Uh, let's see, where are we going next? We go to a, uh, a bus down at the bottom and then through there over to a relay board. Okay. And then feeds up into another relay. <laughs> and a relay is like a switch, is that right? Right, an electric switch. Um, I'm not, I can't really recall the purpose of this guy. Okay. But this is another relay here, and mm. that's what dumps the power into the cap. Oh, wow. But you don't have to manually turn that relay on. That's electrically controlled. Right. Okay. Yeah, the, the UD3 handles all that. Okay. So then we, the, the theory of the circuit, you know, we're, we're feeding through all this protection and switching circuitry, and we charge this cap. Mm -hmm. That cap is connected over to the bridge, and the bridge has um, eight pairs of IGBTs. Eight pairs, so 16? Right. Okay. And there's eight separate bridges. Um, okay. And that's why we have to have such a large connector, such a strange connector, because we feed all the outputs of all eight bridges uh, into that connector. And those uh, join together at the gun. We'll see that shortly when we pick it up. And then the military, was it called a military it's connector? It's called a mil military connector. It's okay. got a, a, a mil spec number. Um, used on old communication gear, probably okay. uh, Vietnam era. This is to blow air out, I'm guessing. Right. Uh, and then what's beneath the fan? And the... So this is a, a 24 volt DC power supply down there to provide power for the UD3 as well as the controller on the gun itself. Okay. And uh, the other stuff is, is mostly cooling related. So we've got uh, a pump down here, this black oh, wow. cylinder, that's, that's a water pump. Mm. Is it possible to do it without water cooling, with air cooling? I think so, it, but it really depends on duty cycle, you know. I, okay. The fan is controllable by a temperature preset, and we can set the threshold which triggers it on or off. Okay. And I rarely ever hear it come on. It just doesn't get warm enough to even trigger the fan, typically. Do you know where the temperature probe is? Um... Is on like a heat sink? It, it's on top of the bridge because that that's what we want to protect. That's what's going to overheat and mm -hmm. blow up if anything does. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing this is, a, this is a classic current feedback DR. Is that right? Absolutely. Okay. Um, well, four of them combined. Yeah, that's right. Um, so what, but you ask about is water cooling necessary? Yeah. I really, so the back, the base plate, the substrate here, the, all this stuff is mounted to is a, um, like an eighth of an inch or maybe even three sixteenths inch thick uh, aircraft aluminum. Okay. You've got that aluminum plate back there. And if the bridge were somehow using it as the heat sink, I think that would be plenty enough mass to keep it cool okay. without the water and stuff. Mm. In my opinion. But like I said, it depends on duty cycle. Now, if I, I sit there and run the gun for five, ten minutes straight, of course the fans are going to come on. Okay. But I never had a need to run it that long. Usually it's, you know, pulse, 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 or, you know, a few take seconds, a break. take a break, let somebody else get in front to be the target. Yeah. <laughs> so you're not <laughs> shooting it continuously, right? Yeah, yeah. Is there some sort of indicator to let you know that you need to charge the batteries? There is on the display when we get the, the gun out and gotcha. look at it. There's a menu where you can monitor voltage. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Steve really did a stand-up job on that UD3. It's amazing. Wow. Um, unlike the UD2, it's two-way communication, right? So it's uh, it's not just uh, getting control signals. It's sending back feedback. 
And it's sending feedback to the bridge or to the controller on the board uh, on the gun itself. Okay. And and with the uh, with Philip Slowinski's uh, controller, it has those um, uh, those inputs for the UD three as well. So is the interrupter on the gun, or is the interrupter in the driver? The the interrupter's here. Oh. It, it's just taking control signals from the display on the gun. There's two connections here to that uh, to the gun. Okay. Um, well, three if you separate these. So you've got the eight separate bridge connectors, which are on the outer perimeter of the connector. Okay. The inner uh, four or five. Yeah, five. Um, one of those is ground, the other is actually the trigger switch. So the trigger switch comes into this connector. Okay. And it goes through this ferrite bead just to keep noise out. Isolation? And it goes, yeah, it goes okay. straight into the UD3. Okay. So there's a set of pins in there made specifically for the trigger. Now this other connector, um, this DIN connector, that's where your data and power for the display comes from. Hmm. Uh, the data and the power. Oh, to power the the controller right. from the power, like in in the yeah, it, here. it gets twenty four volts from the um, power supply, just like the the UD three does. Gotcha. The only other things that, that are in here really are are some resistors that are bolted down, which give us the pre charge, because you don't want to turn the battery directly onto the empty capacitor. Okay. It would, it would over, you know, it would pop your fuse or throw your breaker. Okay. So it's kind of a soft on. When when you first turn it on, you'll hear it click, and that's after it's charged or, or charged to a level um, using the resistors, and then it switches over to direct. And is that is that switch over manual or? Uh, it's timed. It's timed. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sponsor time. PCB Way manufactured and assembled these for me. Circuit boards, high quality. Thank you to Tesla Explorer, he the homie. Okay, this one's really important, don't drop it. Oopsie. Anyway, circuit boards are easy to make with PCB Way. You just submit the design to the company and then you order it super high quality, yep. Yeah. Okay, anyway, thank you. Can we actually look at the support structure for basically this project box, like the yeah, back side? absolutely. So, okay. uh, as I mentioned, the side panels are G10, and okay. the back is a, an aluminum plate. And if we uh, set it down here, we've got uh, this channel, aluminum channel, is basically holding everything together with rivets. Okay, and where would you get those? I think you get those master car as well. Okay. And then this is just a standard backpack frame. Okay. Um, you can just Google that, and that, there's many supplies. It's made in China. A lot of people, places sell the same thing. Okay. And it's just bolted. Uh, oh, man. Yeah, look at all those bolts to onto the, <laughs> too. Yeah, and that, that's one thing about it, man. These things poke you in the back sometimes. Oh, man. <laughs> So oh, if, no. if I could do it over again, I'd probably use shorter screws than some of those places or different mounting. Oh yeah. But uh, I, you know, it, it's uh, it's a great machine, and and I'm just gonna leave it this one just like it is. Okay. <laughs> but we got corner braces here uh, that that gives it some added strength. You know, when you're setting it down. Yes, and those would also be McMaster car. I yeah, I think so. Okay. And these uh, wing nuts here. So one of the important things with this is grounding, right? Yes. So on either side, uh, we've got these wing nuts which connect uh, to the boots. Yes, I and, love the boots. And uh, there's another one on one on e each side, and uh, that that's how it gets its ground. And and the reason you want to do two is because you can walk with it, right? You you want to be able to pick up one foot. <laughs> without it arcing from the other foot to the ground. So one is always grounded. One is always grounded. Gotcha. No jumping with the Tesla coil gun. <laughs> well, I mean, it'd be a nice effect. <laughs> Wait, so if you lift both your feet off the ground at once, like there might might or there will be... There will be an arc coming from the bottom of the boots to the ground. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, because the boots are connected to the, to the I'm guessing, the secondary coil or... Yeah, all, all the, the ground system, uh, it, it, it goes all the way through this cable, so that center pin is the ground. Okay. 
and uh, we, we, yeah, the secondary is tied to it, and, and it's a common ground with the rest of the system. Gotcha. So how do you decide on what, um, like, bolts to use to screw these things in? Well, right. Philip and I, we're very uh, in a, much in agreement about using stainless. Okay. Stainless is just a, a superior to zinc. It's stronger, you know, it's more reliable. You don't have to worry about breaking something or the screw heads rounding out as much. So we went with stainless and typically, you know, when you're talking about a part like this, you want to go as large as the hole will accommodate within reason. Okay. So I would follow the manufacturer's recommendation or, like I said, use the biggest I reasonably could. Okay, great. Why don't we take a look at the gun itself? Sure. Okay, great. Alright, there it is. Alright. We'll start at the connector end. Okay. So yeah, we've got the opposite of what we saw there on the backpack. At the male end. And this has got a heavy mesh. This is actually copper here. Um, probably doesn't need to be. Okay. <laughs> it makes it heavier than it should be. But uh, you, the main reason you want this shielding is because this wire is going to drape. As you're holding the gun, it's going to drape by your, your arm here. And if you don't have it, it could potentially arc okay. uh, through the insulated uh, bridge wires to your arm. Then we uh, come up here and those connections uh, from the bridge go directly into the MMC. Okay. And, and it's actually, uh, in this sense, it really is an MMC. It's actually multiple MMCs together. Wow. Uh, because you got one set of caps for each bridge connection. Um, wow. So eight total MMCs there. I don't recall the capacitance of each one. Uh, it's, I mean, keep in mind, I, I built this in... 2016 so okay it's been a while I don't recall the actual capacitance or combined um, I would probably guess it's in the uh, 0.05 range 0.02 microfarads some, something like that okay I would doubt it would be as much as a 0.1 but I guess it's possible okay um, so Philip actually designed this and built this box. Oh, nice. Um, it's acrylic and just snaps together. Um, actually, it, it interlocks together and it's glued. That's on a, a one inch square aluminum uh, tube. And the, the control wires you see there, and we've got two gray wires that come down. Let's so get those in the, in the shot. This thinner one is the trigger lead. Okay. This thicker one there goes to that DIN connector we already looked at. Um, that's data and power uh, to the display. The, the display gets feedback from the controller on battery voltage, temperature, that sort of thing. But it also sends signals to the pack to tell it frequency, on time, and that sort of thing. Okay. Uh, so those run through the, the square tube there to give that shielding. Because keep in mind, it's going in between our high voltage here. Yeah. So, and notice there that I've got capped on. The capped on. Um, that further protects and insulates um, the ground from the capacitors. Okay. All right, so our, um, we've got another hole in there where the smaller gray wire comes down into the pistol grip. Okay. Um, How'd you get the pistol grip? Yeah, I was just getting to that. So... <laughs> Um, Steve and Philip were using like an airsoft gun that was coated in uh, aluminum tape. Okay. But this, uh, this is another one of my contributions. Um, this actually, not this very one, but I had a BB gun like this when I was about 10 or 11. So it's an antique spring-loaded BB gun is what it is. Oh, okay. It's been sacrificed. Uh, good uh, sacrifice. So it's die-cast metal. You don't have to worry about... Oh, it's about, metal. Okay. Yeah, you don't have to worry about... Um, coating it with something. Um, wow. I'm guessing it's an actual, like, uh, gun trigger to fire this Tesla gun. So how's the, the switch in there? So the trigger, um, it, it acts like a cam. It's got an arm on it that bumps something in the original gun design for the BB gun. And what I did was I just put a micro switch on the other side of that cam. So when you pull the trigger, it presses the micro switch. Okay. So it, it, it's just a lever, essentially, that, that trips the switch. 
Oh, cool. And then you, these panels here are just what's mating the, the pistol grip to the, the G10 and the frame. Okay. And there's our ground connection there for, for the pistol grip itself. Mm. It grounds one thing to another, basically. And what is the connector like here? That's another one of my hardware questions. All right, Under so there, the, that's think? the primary coil there, the silver yes. uh, tubing. This is aluminum tubing. Mm. And what's in there is actually a crimp. So we, we um, uh, strip these four wires for each side okay. and shove them up in the, into that aluminum tubing and crimp it. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's not much to it. Okay. And then, of course, we've got this uh, more G10 here. This is super glued together. And, in fact, uh, the windings are super glued to the G10. Okay. All, all that's holding all that together is super glue. Okay. And, uh, you know, it, it's lasted, what, six, seven years now, so it's mm -hmm. doing okay. Um, so that frame uh, also has holes in it to mount. Um, we've got a plate uh, end cap here with four holes that go to these spacers and another plate up under the, the toroid, which, um, where they terminate. And that's with, uh, or of course we're using nylon threaded rod there because you don't want insulated, or you don't want conductive material inside the secondary. Yeah, I would arc. Right. So this is where the secondary terminates. You see the hole there with a the small black wire coming out? Yeah. That's uh, connected to the uh, lower end of the secondary and it comes out and goes to that thumb screw which grounds it. Okay. And do you get a thumb screw at a hardware store? or? Yeah, th these actually came from Home Depot, I think. They're in them little drawers where the specialty parts are. Okay, great. Um, this is a four inch uh, diameter tube. There's probably only about, I would guess, 600 turns there. Maybe not even that many. Um, so it, it's stubby. It's, mm. uh, it, it's, it's a stubby little coil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, and then we get up to our display. Um, so this is totally custom. Uh, Steve designed this. Wow. Um, and it's, to, it's made to communicate with the UD3, so they're a match set. Okay. And it has the same or similar software as Philips Lindsay's controller, and it kind of operates the same with the four knobs. Okay. But this one adds a special ramp mode, which is what's needed for the gun. Okay, for the long arcs. Well, the ramp mode is what um, enables the trigger function on the UD3. That's the only mode that listens for a trigger. So like a normal ARSG um, uh, imitation or, you know, just pulse mode doesn't work with it because okay. it needs the trigger. Okay. The fact that it's a gun necessitates that it's ramped like, uh, is it a ramped? I don't, I don't know if ramp mode means a change in the signal to what goes to the driver or if it's specifically about... Uh, being a triggered function rather than uh, constantly on like like the other modes. Okay. Um, why don't we get into, like I was wondering what the history of the Tesla coil gun is. How did you get this? Where did you find out about this? And also, what got you to that point? Like what was your educational background? I'm okay, well, let's sit down for that one. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Thanks for showing us the Tesla coil gun. What I'm curious first off is what led you or empowered you to be able to create the Tesla coil gun? What was your educational background? Well, I, I was educated in electronics in high school a couple of years, but even before that, just my own interest in electronics and electricity drove me to study it before I was able to do so, you know, academically. So it, I was a subscriber to Radio Electronics, Popular Electronics, and several other, as many as I could get my hands on publications related to electronics and learning. You know, I was building kits uh, when I was, um, you know, in my uh, teenage years, as even earlier. Um, my stepdad was uh, retired Air Force, and he was into electronics, and uh, he would build Heathkit TVs and other 
you know, electronics at home. And, you know, I was exposed to it at a really early age. Is that a build-your-own-TV kit? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The the old CRT, the glass tube one. So we we actually built one of those, a full console size one. Oh, my gosh. Uh, That was when I was probably, I don't know, 10 maybe. So, you know, I've just always had an interest in it. And um, I I learned through doing. I'm very empirical. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was taking apart my toys and getting the boards out of remote control cars and making robots with them or putting two things together to make something else or stuff like that when I was a kid. So it was just, it was a natural thing for me. Oh, cool. Um, By trade, I'm a programmer. That's my primary uh, employment. But, uh, you know, that that's strictly to have an income mm-hmm. my interests my hobbies what my passions are are, are related to electricity mm-hmm. and that's driven me to to learn you know and, and just learn by doing mm. did you get a college degree i did not okay. in fact i have a ged i didn't even finish high school oh wow I had a bit of a rough childhood and uh, got in some trouble and um it just didn't work out for me to be able to go to college, but mm. I don't really look at that as a, a negative thing. No. Not anymore. Um, I've done okay. Yeah, that's exactly. It's the experience speaks for itself. I don't have the experience yet, and so it's very inspiring to come to you and hear that all this incredible achievement is from from you. Yeah. And thank so, you. yeah. Appreciate that. Of course. Coming here, I was like expecting some sort of roadmap for me going into um, getting better at testicles and here I am finding out that it's interest it's interest led and it's it's completely in my hands now <laughs> yeah well I mean you uh, you kind of uh, make your own fate right yeah what was your most formative job that you think helped you uh, to build like Tesla coils or um, I've never really worked in a, uh, a related profession, not special effects or um, building custom electronics or anything. I've worked in an electronics store. Okay. Uh, it's called Mock Electronics. That was in uh, the early 90s, actually. Okay. And uh, I worked at a security company as well as, um, and when I say security, I mean like installing systems, card access and uh, burglar alarms, fire alarms, cameras, that sort of thing. But that exposed me to the computer, and that's what kind of got me interested in learning about uh, programming. Mm. But all the same time, I was running this parallel kind of thing with my hobbies. I was building Tesla stuff yeah. while I was learning computers for my work, for my main job. Um, and really, you know, I was doing small stuff, vacuum tube stuff, uh, back when I was a kid, neon sign transformers, that sort of thing. But kind of uh, what elevated me to uh, being able to make the gun was mm. um, it started out on the Tesla coil mailing list. Mm. Uh, that's where I met David Reben, and David had already built a large Tesla coil. And he shared with me some tips and tricks and kind of got me, uh, got me going. And uh, that was a, uh, my first coil that was made from a pole transformer. So okay. it was oh, nice. 15 kilowatt, stood about nine foot tall. I've still got that coil. And in fact, that one, if you, if you saw um, this, my, my episode, or the episode I was in on Skinwalker Ranch season two, that coil is the, that first one I built that I used for that shoot. I'll have to watch it. Yeah. Um, but then kind of what got me into DRSSTCs and solid states, I've got to give uh, uh, Philip Sawinski and Steve Ward credit for that. Um, they were also on the Tesla coil mailing list, and Steve and I interacted uh, quite a bit. He helped me with some vacuum tube stuff originally. Okay. Way back in the day. And uh, when he d- developed the staccato controller, oh, so wow. that, that's the uh, circuitry to pulse the tube so it doesn't run continuously. You get more, you get longer sparks with the uh, the pulse. Yeah, I've made a desktop staccato it's Tesla coil before. Okay. Mm. Uh, but then we started going to Tesla thons. 
Um, the ones that stand out are uh, the WWT, that was uh, in Phoenix, and uh, Richard Hull has one in uh, Virginia, or in Richmond, and then Ed Wingate in New York. So uh, Steve would go to those as well as Jeff and um, uh, Terry Blake. Um, so I would hang out with those guys and they were kind of on the forefront of the solid state stuff. And it was, it was funny because um, their early coils would only run a few minutes and blow up. You know, oh, my gosh. Silicone, the silicone flying. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I was like, you know, I'll let you guys work the bugs out. I'll build one later. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, years went by, and they kept improving them, and they got more reliable. And mm. Then I think it was, uh, I want to say it was 2012 or 13. Steve shows up in Phoenix with the Tesla gun. Wow. And he like blew everybody away. It was one of his earliest ones. Um, and, but you know, still it was just, nobody had ever even thought of that at the time. Yeah, that's, like, wow. that's out of sci-fi <laughs> fantasy. Even. So at that point, I still hadn't even built my own DRSSTC. Oh wow. But I was really intrigued by the gun. Well, fast forward a few years, uh, Philip, uh, actually Philip came, you know, he, I met Philip around that same time, 2012 or so, and he showed up at my doorstep. Uh, he was interested in coils and he, he learned about me on the Tesla coil mailing list. And uh, he showed up with uh, homemade uh, beer bottle capacitors and a spark gap Tesla coil. Okay. And, you know, we tweaked and tuned. I helped him with it and he, he uh, was interested in the things I was doing. and. Um, so, you know, we worked together for uh, a number of years and we would go to the Tesla thons together. Well, um, uh, Philip was also intrigued by the gun and the DRSSTCs, so he decided to start making them. And mm -hmm. uh, kind of, he, he would, he would kind of rag on me a little bit uh, because we, you know, we would do projects together or shows or whatever and you know I'm moving this big heavy equipment mm. and he's carrying around this little bitty stuff and <laughs> he's making fun of me because I've got all he called it iron you got all that iron uh. you know and um, so it, you know it, it, he was gradually convincing me that there's a better way the solid state right so I uh, I was on board with it and the deal was uh, we we built we we built a um, kind of a sister to that original coil that I bit the big one that was powered by the pole transformer. Okay. We built a big version of that, so a nine foot tall DRSSTC. You can see it on the uh, Tesla Universe channel. Mm. But uh, it, it, it kind of in the middle of that, uh, we were doing a show with Travis Taylor uh, on the Weather Channel called Three Scientists Walk Into a Bar. Oh, wow. And, I got to look these shows up. Yeah, is... so this was, uh, you know, 2014, uh, 15 kind of time frame. And uh, there, that was, I want to say, six or eight episodes. And one of the episodes was called Electric Weather. And okay. they wanted to have something lightning related for that show. Okay. Well... Uh, Philip had already started building the Tesla gun at that point. Okay. Uh, and he volunteered. He's like, hey, let's, uh, let's see if they want to do something with the Tesla gun. So we took it to Travis. And Travis... It's one, one of the showrunners, I'm guessing. No, Travis Taylor is the star of Skimwalker Ranch. Okay. And he, he did Rocket City Rednecks and a lot of other science-related things. Okay. Uh, Ancient Aliens. He's... Uh, very uh, active on that show. Okay. Um, so Travis, and he, he was the leader of that Weather Channel show, yes. Um, he wanted to do a duel with the Tesla gun. Like, have you know, he have one and Philip have one and they make a duel. So cool. kind of the deal was that, okay, so uh, we need two guns. Philip's working on one already. So we need a, we need to add one. Mm. So the what we the arrangement we came up with is, uh, I would pay for the gun. I would buy all the parts, and that he Philip and Travis would be in the shot for that show with the dueling Tesla guns. Mm -hmm. And then when the show finished, I get to keep the gun because nice. 
and of course I, I helped build it too and I, I, um, I designed some parts that we needed that, that you know that was kind of my portion of the work yeah. so we, we feverishly began building these these two guns and uh, Philip was making parts and you know I was assembling and you know there was a lot of back and forth but when it came down to it we I don't remember exactly what we were waiting on but um, we couldn't finish the guns in time that, that was the bottom line we, we had a deadline and Philip really killed himself to try to, to try to, to meet that deadline and, and we just couldn't make it mm. so we had to fall back to plan B which was uh, ended up being me in a Faraday suit on top of a Tesla coil okay and I was shooting lightning <clears throat> in my hands, you know? yeah so the show was still a success uh, unfortunately um, of course Philip was disappointed because he wanted to be in the show mm. with the gun and we just couldn't finish it in time yeah but we kept going. We finished the show. We kept going. We finished the guns in a, a couple of months, and I think that was just before Philip did the Jimmy Kimmel show with Steve. Oh wow! Okay. And so that that kind of gives you an idea of when it happened, a timeline. Yeah. Well, um, I had actually finished mine and got it working, and a friend of mine named Ivan wanted to do some photos of it. Hmm. Well, he took the shot that you've probably seen on my website with me standing up. You know, it's, it's a real pretty shot. He did a really good shot. Oh, nice. And um, that picture kind of went a little viral. And I think that's um, that kind of expo gave the gun more broader exposure. Okay. And then, coincidentally, around that same time, I get a call from Destin. Okay. Like, Hey, dude, I need a Tesla coil for a show that I'm doing. And uh, he, he was, you know, he told me he wanted to do the slow motion thing with arcs. And I'm like, yeah, I, we've got the big coil. We can make 12 foot arcs all day long. Come on <laughs> over. Nice. And we did the shoot. And, uh, you know, he got what we, he needed. And just at the last second, you, you'll, you'll see, if, if you watch the, the video with Destin, you'll see. I'm like, hey, you want to see this other thing I've got? Oh my so it was gosh. kind of an afterthought. We, the, the show wasn't to really be about the gun. So it was totally an afterthought. And I brought the gun out and, you know, Destin shot the famous video that everybody's seen, you know. So and that became time. the thumbnail. It was a meme. I mean, it, it's it's many memes I've seen with it. Oh. <laughs> it trended on Reddit. It was a big deal, you know. Yeah. Well, you know, unfortunately... Um, there's a little bit of uh, you know animosity about that and and uh, one thing I want to make clear to you and everybody that's watching is that Steve Ward and Philip Slowinski designed the Tesla gun I did not mm. I built it I did some improvements to it I you know you, you know the story now and, yeah and I don't take credit for it it's it, it's not my design and it never was, and I never said it was. Yeah, I'll let everybody know. Okay. The way I see it, I love when the world finds out about something really cool, and then uh, someone can explain it to a lot of people, so more people can ap appreciate the ins and outs of it. And so that was my goal with this video. Give it what it deserved, all the engineering that Steve and Philip put into it. And... Uh, also, hopefully, get mine eventually built one day. Well, I'll help you any way I can. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Let's go shoot it. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> That's a great idea. <laughs>
4.24 amps. Great power, 101 watts. E-bang, e energy, oh, that'll come up or something. Yeah, maybe while you're running it. Yeah. I think this is the last step that I need in order to eventually make a Tesla coil gun. Okay. Do you approve of this? <laughs> well, if he makes it, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, okay, go for it. All right. Are you ready? Okay, Cameron, go. Thank you so much, Cameron. You're I will. Hey, great to meet you. So good to meet you. Thank you so much for all the information. It's been amazing. Yep. And uh, I uh, can't wait to maybe uh, duel you with my Tesla coil gun. We'll do it. Good all right. For that. Thank you so much. <laughs>